Hey everybody, welcome back, it's business, and <sighs> yeah, this is going to be an interesting one for you today, alright, so strap yourselves in, there's a lot of shit that's about to happen. So that was in North Carolina, He look at where he's positioned on the map, and uh, understand the fact that there's a lot of gray ships that are, that were spotted north of A and at A, and um, that guy's in for a hell of a ride. So we have this new map, Neighbors, which... Doesn't seem like people really know what to do on this map, and I'm not entirely sure why, but uh, Otago pops up here at B, and uh, I had missed a few salvos on it before, but not that time. So, I have a Pensacola with me, and he's helping me out a great deal, and you're going to see that our carrier player is very active in trying to keep the skies clear as well. Um, I, God, I greatly appreciate it, especially when... I'm bottom tier in the match and there's a, a higher tier carrier, it just, god, it helps so much. <laughs> and um, This Pentacola is uh, on my flank here and uh, again he provides a nice aerial coverage there, a, a nice bubble for me to, you know, continue doing my thing here, so greatly appreciated that from him. Uh, now the enemy has taken B and frankly our team is non-committal. And this is a big problem that I find with the game in general is just, well, the player base in general. Not It's not the game's fault, it's the player base. Um, as an, an Aoba comes around here and comes to a stop just a few kilometers off my, uh, my port side here. Now check this out. Easy pickings. Not today, actually. <laughs> so, torpedoes come in, drop, and uh, they're panicked so they go all over the place um the pensacola actually managed to get close quarters expert on the aoba which i thought was funny now um again if you take a look at the minimap these guys haven't really moved much and more to the point they haven't moved into c which is where they should be nobody should be to the right of c other than their carrier and as i'm moving up here you know i I'm in a, a bit of a rough position because that Colorado has now poked out and there's a Fuso off to my left. So, you know, now I'm moving in towards uh, the Fuso and trying to keep myself angled against two battleships on my flank, and it, it's a balancing act. But uh, luckily, the Colorado goes behind that island just ahead of me, and after losing a few of our ships here, I think uh, we lost the York and that Pensacola that was. Uh, actually very very helpful throughout the first part of the match take out the food cell. now there's an enemy cleveland at b and we still have a lot of ships coming up on the southern half of the map and again our guys just aren't pushing in to the center of the map which is where they should be this prevents them from being able to take c easily if we you know have to continue moving across the way but now the uh, colorado has uh, taken some more damage there, got a nice drop from our ranger, and I get, I, I don't think I actually did compliment this guy, and I really meant to, like, he did a kick-ass job, like, you know, just really involved in the match, and um, very active with his planes, he, you know, actually moved his ship, and we'll see a little bit more about that type of thing later, but, um, enemy Cleveland here, I did okay with that first salvo, I was hoping to knock him out, and now I do. So things are looking up, right? So we have a lead, about 100 points, even though we're down uh, with two caps to one. And the enemy Hiryu shows up, and I lose sight of him and have to fire where I think he's going to be. Now, I had... There we go. We have five hits and a citadel, so six hits on him. Cut him in half. That's pretty good. Now, I was desperately trying to get our Hatsu to go to B, and unfortunately we lost a shitload of time by this guy literally chasing the wake of the enemy here. And again, if you take note of our battleships, they're not battleshipping. <laughs> I don't know how to put it. Um, the fact that we just lost C without these guys doing much of anything to prevent them is insane. And I don't know where the hell this guy was sending his torps, but wow, just way, way off. Now, 
this is a very rapid series of events here. We just lost a ship. 991 points. Remember, they have two caps. They just gained... <laughs> Look at that. They just gained eight points. It's 999, and right when I hit the North Carolina and kill him, they got more points. Like, that literally could not have been any closer at all. And we still have a York to deal with, and the Hiryu is still running, and unfortunately, the Hatuharu is still riding in his wake. Instead of cutting him off and going down like the three or four line, he's following directly behind him with absolutely zero chance for his torpedoes to be effective at any stage. And so the enemy team is gaining eight points per tick. So this is where the difference is in us not getting the caps and preventing them from capping. Like if we stop them from capping C at all, this would be different, entirely different actually. Uh, we would have the lead. And now it's up to me. You gotta be kidding me, I splashed inside this ship. It's up to me to seal the deal. And unfortunately, I do not. <laughs> uh, yeah. Top of the team with 1600 base XP and uh, third in the match overall, actually. Yeah. And there's something you really don't want to see at this tier. A carrier cross-dropping? Oh boy. Probably in for some trouble later, but... Yeah, nice little salvo on the enemy Fuso there, and uh, I was trying to tell our carrier, the Ryujo that was uh, right next to me, to get moving, because for some reason he wasn't moving in the first like, three or four minutes. Now I'm splitting my turrets, I sent three off at the Fuso, and one at the Konigsberg here. Citadel on both. <laughs> now that felt good. Um... Yeah, you'll see a little bit more of that later, but as far as this match, though, it's it's basically a clusterfuck. Um, our carriers, well, one of the carriers is still up in the top right corner, despite the fact that there's a bunch of enemies not very far to the south. I don't know why they didn't curl back to behind our cap zone in the uh, that that big uh, island that's back there. Uh, probably would have kept them in the match a bit longer. <laughs> and and uh, this Minikaze had been, oh my god, this guy was a pain in my ass. He just kept launching torp wave after torp wave, and luckily, I had dodged all of them, you know, and uh, he he was persistent as hell, and I gotta give him, give him credit where it's due, of course. Um, you know, he really prevented me from being able to move forward, mainly because I didn't really have much in the way of support. Uh, I do have a an Izzyaslav that's actually next to me here, and now the Fuso is flattening out, and do a full salvo there. And uh, pay attention to this guy, though. He's going to be pretty important later on. <laughs> if if only for entertainment factor. Uh, and the Minikaze showed back up again. I flipped around, of course. Managed to get a couple hits on him. Enemy New York comes into play. And here come more Torps from the Minikaze. So, um, actually, I think that was the Minikaze. It must have been. I don't know what else was over there that could have launched Torps uh, from that range. But... I think maybe the Furu Talker or something, I don't know. Anyways, um, first salvo there, or first half of the salvo doesn't do anything, get my rear turrets involved, and I know this Minikaze is still around here somewhere. He pretty much is consuming all of my attention right now because I have to be so, so careful about my movements. And speaking of that, look at this. I overturned my turrets, and he's got a full broadside shot on me. RNG for the win, yay! It didn't work for him, but it worked for me. <laughs> so 9 out of 12 hits there, get high caliber on that, and I'm, I'm rolling in the damage here. Um, and I got to turn away because I'm expecting Torps again through this gap. I fire another salvo and only land one hit for a penetrating damage of about 2600. I did load up HE, and now unfortunately after dodging another set from the Minikaze, which slowed me down, I get a drop on my starboard side, or I'm sorry, my port side from the carrier, and take a look, a cross drop. <laughs> now I took one torp there in the first one, and I'm just too damn slow and vulnerable to be able to uh, accelerate any fr faster and try to cut in any further there. And at this point, I've, I've about had it with this Minikaze shit. So I get a, a few hits on him. And actually the surprising thing there was that I didn't flood. I you know took three Torp hits um, 
I don't know, I just found that pretty interesting, but there's the salvo that takes out the Minikaze, and yay. Now I can get back to doing what I should be doing, and look at that, another Torp spread. <laughs> now lucky for me, I was on pace to be able to avoid those anyways. I get back to our cap though, and there's a goddamn war spite here. I was hoping to do more than that and just knock him out. I just had a little too much lead there. I sh if I hit closer to a midships with the bulk of those shells, I would have killed him, and I know that would have been the case. Now, unfortunately, the 15-inch guns on that ship can penetrate this ship like a fucking boss, and he does around eight, 9,000 damage to me right through the front, and uh, despite being angled on the first salvo that he sent. So there's a New York that's back there as well. He's not helping things at all. And I tried to take out the the war spite there, and you saw me, I, I flicked my vision over to the New York because I was hoping to bring my rear turrets on him. But unfortunately, it was do or die there. I had to get, get that damn war spite down. And uh, I actually don't know why I'm turning back like that. I should have turned in, so that was my mistake. And then... Yeah, we lost a buddy Oni that was way up there in A whatever. Um, you know, he was way off in the distance, and you can see where he died. What's that? I think that's C3, the little gray spot there. Now, check this out, though. This is one for the ages. What a hell of a torp dodge. So, what do you do to fuck that up? You turn right back into it. I, I just. I, I don't know. Yeah, so how how do you make that even worse? By not reacting for a few seconds. Well, actually, it should have been reacting long before that. And then getting to it like that. So I think I was at my two-stage uh, coping mechanism there of flipping my fucking desk. It was such a difficult day. And then I had this match, which is thoroughly tier 8. And uh, by the way, after this little clip showing the team composition, uh, there's no more editing. So it's a straight shot through the rest of the match, and you're going to see some gnarly shit. <laughs> so this was this was pretty incredible, and uh, I'm happy by the fact that, one, I'm in the North Carolina, and there's tier 6 carriers on the team, so great. I feel so much better about that, being able to just not even worry about the damn airplanes. Um, unfortunately, my first salvo against this Kiev here missed wildly, and... Yeah, I just did not give him enough lead. Um, I was trying to tell that Atlanta that he should be over near me on this side of the island instead of behind it because he's just of no use to anybody. He's not going to be able to hit a damn thing back there. Uh, our Mayhan up here, he's trying to get something done, but unfortunately he is certainly outmatched by this Kiev here who has full health versus the Mayhan's, you know, what, 20% health. Now, it looks like the Kiev is slowing down a bit. And, yeah, he's definitely slowing down, so he's uh, popping smoke now, but I get an AP salvo off, nail him with four hits for over 5,000 damage, and boom, the Mayhan takes him out. So while we did just lose the Mayhan, I've got bigger problems. Uh, there's a Benson right in front of me, and there's one of his Torp spreads. I can't actually tell if it was both, so I'm preparing just in case there's another Torp spread in the water, and it looks like the Hipper's going to take a few of those. Now, look at this salvo. 8,300. Wow. <laughs> so, yep, okay. And there's the other salvo from his Torp launchers, so... Luckily, I reacted to that ahead of time, anticipating something going on. Uh, there is a North Carolina further off to my south. He seems to be in no rush to come up here and you know, do much in the way of assisting. Um, it seems like there's a few more ships than I realized coming this way. Uh, there is a stock Nagato, and I'm trying to line him up. I'm asking for help at sea here, which is what I called out at the beginning. Uh, for people to come this way and I want you to also just bear in mind the rest of the team over at B well between A and B there so my first salvo against the Nagato doesn't really do much of anything uh, looks like the Atlanta is up here a little bit but I know the hipper is pretty well damaged as you can see in the top left player panel bar there he's got less than 10% of his HP now there's a lot of ships coming in and big mistake by the Nagato here 
go a bit broadside and he's really slow too, so that gives me plenty of opportunity to line up one hell of a hit. So 39,000 damage. So, wow. And I'd be lying to you if I said that I didn't expect a good hit there. I just sure as hell didn't expect an outright kill like that. That was that was surprising. Um, but, hey, a new challenger appears and it's a uh, Nurnberg. It's a uh, Sea Hall. So I've got to make sure that even though he only has one torp launcher, that I stay outside of that 6 kilometer range. And take a look at this salvo. Looks pretty good. And overpen. Yeah, five overpens for 6,500 damage. Yep. So wouldn't uh, you wouldn't be able to have a great salvo followed up by another great salvo, right? But <laughs> uh, there's a lot of ships over here, though. There's a beach, North Carolina, in front of me, and right there. Yep, there are a few ships there. I can't engage him because I need to get rid of this Nuremberg. I can't let him stay on my side like this. He starts to turn out a bit, which gives just enough follow through for the shells to devastating strike him as well. So. Yeah, now it's time to figure out what the hell I'm gonna do here. So I've got my, I've got about a minute on my heel. I just popped my repair, and these guys are gonna start sending a whole shitload of fire my way. Now I'm gonna pay attention to not the beached North Carolina, and I think he's just unbeached himself now. But the guy that's ahead of him, who has uh, really opened up his side to me. Unfortunately, not able to make him pay there. Only did 7,700 damage. Um, yeah, not what I was hoping for, but there's a New Orleans that's just behind the island. The two North Carolinas in front of that. The Pensacola off to the left of the island, and there's an Otago over to the fur uh, further off to the left as well. Uh, he's going to get harassed a little bit by the destroyers that are just coming out of B, and that, I think, actually makes a bit of a difference here, and I'll explain that later. Right but I line up the Pensacola. And the shells are coming in, and I thought that was the Citadel because the yellow ribbon, damn it, but it was just uh, incapacitation, so very disappointing. <laughs> um, I know there's quite a few of you guys out there too have probably had that same thing happen, like, oh shit, yeah, I got a bunch of Citadels. Nah, nope, nope, just broke his engine or his rudder or something like that. Now, I was originally going to shoot at this guy, but I saw that he started to turn in right there, so I switched back to the North Carolina that's actually a lot closer and unfortunately I had too much lead there and I just again couldn't follow through with making some damage happen now the Otago is coming in on my left there's gonna be some good maneuvering here uh, because there's a few things I'm anticipating one I'm expecting my death to come from the Otago at any second just a wall of torps and uh, that's why I pointed towards these guys and then started pulling away to try to get some inertia going here and bring my three turrets in play because I, I honestly expected to die right at this moment and I wanted to do whatever damage I could. Unfortunately, again, I get shit on by dispersion. Now that little move though there was huge because those torpedoes would have hit exactly where I was if I continued going forward. Now that's only one torp spread. I think he actually sent a torp spread at the destroyers that were coming up along his flank and that made all the damn difference in the world. Now we are in full brawl uh, brawl mode here. I get high caliber and confederate with uh, Citadel on the Otago. Now I've got two North Carolinas dead ahead of me and pay attention to my sea turret and the Otago's movements. He's walking right into my sea turrets uh, line of fire, so this allows me to split my turrets in an extreme manner, where I've got my reload coming up from my front turrets, boom, knock out the Otago there, and get my front turrets around on the North Carolina as he turns in, boom, get him as well, double strike in the glorious fashion. Now I pop my heel real fast because I'm on fire and this is a damn dangerous situation of course. Um, I have a whole lot of torpedoes off to my right from a teammate so you see those right there. And unfortunately the dead North Carolina takes the brunt of those and I've got time for one more salvo here. The only thing keeping me alive is my heel and the fact that it's still active. I die and I get 8 hits. I should have aimed higher, hit the superstructure. I probably would have done some more damage, but holy fucking shit, what a brawl. 
<laughs> what a stand. And as far as the previous matches are concerned, this one completely erased those memories. Like, you know, I, I did what I could, and I, you know, sometimes it just doesn't work out regardless of how well you're doing. Generally, if you are, if you are doing that well, it's because the rest of your team isn't. And you just got to do what you can, and that's that. I mean, you can't really expect anything more than that, I guess. But uh, as far as the detail report's concerned, 54 out of 108 shell hits, so I had 50% accuracy. I took 95,659 damage with 207 shell hits. I mean, the huge amount of HE shell damage was ridiculous, but uh, those knocked out 47 of my AA mounts. There's 59 of them, by the way, on the North Carolina. So battleships, do what you can to help your team. You have the heals, you have the armor, get in there and take the hits that your lighter teammates can't. That's the best advice I can give you. And stay angled. Try to stay angled, of course. But <laughs> um, I'll be streaming today at 2.30 p.m. Eastern, so feel free to swing by and uh, say hello. Hope you enjoyed today's video, guys, and uh, best of luck out there, ranked or random, and I'll see you back here soon.